jail. It's a volatile world of stress and intimidation. It just seems like once that anger just goes, I go off the handle. Predators and prey. You gotta put up a fight. You got to. Where lines are drawn. You gotta choose a side. And the worst thing you can do is stand out from the crowd. It's like, uh, what are you doing? You know, I don't wanna be contaminated with the gay, like it's the disease. It's a big risk to be a target in here. But for some, it's a risk worth taking. If you don't like me for me, you for you. I'm me. I'm not changed for nobody. Now let's go. Before prison, this is jail. There's jail. Good, where guilt or innocence hangs in the balance. And each day brings you one step closer to your fate. During one year, National Geographic followed the lives of officers and inmates in the city of Las Vegas. For a jail that sees nearly 80,000 arrestees each year, you never know who's coming in next. This is the world of hard time. Las Vegas, Nevada is a playground, one that draws in a wide variety of people. And the jail is no different. Clark County Detention Center is home to over 3,500 inmates. And roughly 300 new inmates are brought in each day. All right, turn your body to the right. From murderers and violent gang members to shoplifters and drunk drivers, CCDC is home to all types. What the can you guys do to me? Make sure you're safe. Yeah, no, you're just a bitch. To help organize the chaos, officers from the jail's classification unit question each new inmate as they are processed. All right, you have any gang affiliations at all? Associate with anybody? Do you have any enemies here in custody I shouldn't know about? Any psychiatric treatment on the streets? This gives us a way that we separate um, serious charges from the uh, less violent charges. Um, we don't want to put anybody in that's in here for murder in with someone that's in here for just a simple traffic ticket. So in order to do that, we have to do it right away so that we don't put the wrong person in the wrong cell. Once thrown into general population, new arrivals are classified again by their fellow inmates. Along lines of gang affiliation and race. It's a process that officers watch closely because these divisions often lead to violence. And the task of classifying each inmate doesn't end at intake. We're going to be uh, doing our operation in Nine Baker tonight. We have approximately 74 inmates that we're going to be uh, taking a look at. Today, Sergeant Rocco Lepore and the jail's gang unit are taking things a step further. If they have tattoos, take pictures of them. We're going to go cell by cell, one inmate at a time. We're looking for specific tattoos. We're looking to see which then could possibly tie them into gang affiliation. They are conducting Operation Ink Spot, part of an ongoing effort to catalog the tattoos of every inmate in CCDC. Tattoos can then be used both to classify gang affiliation and as identifiable markings in court cases. All right, let me guess, you're blood. No, I'm not, no? I'm not telling you, I'm not. Did they take your tats down in uh, booking? Yeah, I, I'm on fire. I'm already in the gang unit all this Well, they got you listed in the gang unit. Oh, you good. All right, a lot, of blood, a lot of blood's in here. Yeah. There's, there's Crips, too. Well, they don't have any documented us. Skinhead. Skinhead syndicate or just skinhead? Skinhead. Six, get off the door. 
That's why I'm asking if you've been uh, no. clicked up with the Sureños. No. This is your opportunity to tell me if you're in any danger. Mm -mm. So I can do what I have to do. You sure? Yes, I'm sure. So if there's somebody that you don't get along with, a certain group, you need to let me know. Because I don't want to get you caught up in nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Among the Sereños, Crips, white supremacists, and other affiliated convicts, officers come across one man who doesn't seem to fit in. I'll lift your chain, boss. I didn't get it. There we go. Antoine Valentin. That's cool. Is that scorpion? Yeah. Do we have you uh, documented as anything? Uh, no. Where are you from originally? New Hampshire. So, back east. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the politics out here? It's a little it's bit different. Actually, actually, uh, the politics did kind of uh, throw me off because uh, I'm black and Hispanic, black and Puerto Rican. So when I came over here... With no clear gang or race affiliations, Antoine doesn't easily fit into any one category. Antoine has been in CCDC for nearly a year, awaiting sentencing for a domestic violence and strangulation charge. And this is not his first time behind bars. With prison time already under his belt, Antoine is a hardened convict. But his previous prison stint was in New Hampshire, and he's quickly learning that the convict code is very different out west. Where I'm from, there's not like a lot of racism. Like back east when I did time, there wasn't like a lot of politics, like races and stuff like that. I came out here, and I see that like a lot of Mexicans and blacks don't get along. I'm like, what? I'm half Hispanic, so I can go either way. <laughs> you know, they talk to me and they're like, yo, what's up, man? Talking to some of the brothers over here, you know, some of the homies over there. So I'm cool with everyone, you know? I like to, I like to mingle with people. You know, a couple of, like, the homies, some of the essays and everything, they're like, oh, oh you, which one are you today? Are you black or are you, are you Hispanic today? I was like, hey, you, like. <laughs> For Antoine, being both black and Hispanic means walking a fine line of loyalty and brotherhood with two opposing races at the same time. And in jail, spending time with one race may mean seriously offending another. It can make you an outsider, a target, something that Daniel Brown is learning the hard way. It's very hard to live in the East. I'm from California come to Vegas to be with my sister. Pretty much start off fresh, but that didn't happen. <laughs> Daniel is serving five months in jail for loitering near a school with a concealed weapon. And in jail, his choice of who to spend time with has upset some of the other inmates. Being in group homes and growing up, I affiliate with a lot of African Americans. So when I come to jail, I'm ghetto. <laughs> I'm, that's me. I'm ghetto. And people don't like it. Group home kids are just like inmates. They all got to prove themselves. Sick of being taunted for hanging out with black inmates, Daniel lashed out and landed in the additional segregation unit, also known as the hole. Mr. Brown? Yes, sir. Come on and have a seat, sir. Today, he is going before the Conduct Adjustment Board or CAB, where he will be given a chance to tell his side of the story. Let me read the report to you here real quick, all right? The whole thing works like a court within the jail, and classification officers are judge and jury. As I opened the door, I noticed inmate Brown, Daniel, housed in 9843 Upper, pushing chairs around and then taking his shirt off and challenging other inmates to fight. Do you remember that incident? Well, that person who was the conflict was in between, he has been messing with me since I've been on the unit. And he's all, white power this, white power that. And he looked at me and he came up to me and was like, what's up, Little Wood? I was like, I'm not no Little Wood, man. I don't get down with that racist I'm not with that. <laughs> he looked at me crazy. And in church services, he kept calling me a bitch, calling me a bitch, calling me a bitch. And all I did was, yeah, I pushed the chairs out the way, took my shirt off and said, call me a bitch one more time. And we're going to prove somebody a bitch. I'm not a bitch. I'm not a punk. What was the purpose of you doing that? I just got tired of being bullied, you know what I mean? I was bullied my whole life, so I just got tired of it. And I was just kind of tripped out, yes. Plead guilty to that, I guess. Okay, we understand inmate subculture. This isn't the way to handle this kind of situation, though. 
Yes. All right, we can't have you acting like this. Uh, the 10 for the threat, the five for the shove. Mm -hmm. All right, we are gonna find you guilty of both charges. We're gonna sanction you uh, to 10, uh, 15 days here in disciplinary housing, 10 for threatening another physical harm, and five for disrupting the module. Any questions? No, sir. All right, good luck to you. If you don't like me for me, you for you. I'm me. I'm not changing for nobody. For Daniel, standing up to a bully means spending 15 days in the hole. And when his time's up, he'll be thrown back into the pressures and politics of general population. The world of jail is a tensely wound community, segregated into groups, races, and gangs. And like in the outside world, some people just don't fit in. But in here, not fitting in can be dangerous. So CCDC has a special tier for inmates who can't make it in general population. Inmates whose sexuality, gender identity, or charges make them automatic targets. For their safety, they must be kept in their own unit, secluded from general population protective custody. I don't care what anybody says. Say what you want about me, but I really know who I am, truthfully. You don't know anything about me, why judge me? No matter what anybody choose to do in life, should I judge them? No, that's not my responsibility. You treat me like an individual, you show me respect, I'll do the same for you. You disrespect me, I can do the same for you. Welcome to Unit 5B, Clark County Detention Center's protective custody module. Homosexuals, transgendered inmates, snitches, and accused child molesters are just some of the inmates who call 5B home. And among them is a newcomer, Ricky Lane. Addictions to drugs and gambling led to a failed armed robbery attempt and landed Ricky here. My mind is still kind of cloggy about the specifics of what happened on the particular night that led up to the arrest, but I know that I did participate in the robbery. I was extremely intoxicated and I had just started using methamphetamine. It took about two weeks for me to actually sober up and realize the extent of the damage that I've done. I was devastated. Being openly gay, Ricky must be kept in protective custody for his own safety until he is rolled out to prison, where he's been sentenced to four years. What's better about protective custody versus general population is that you're, you're able to be yourself here. General population, they have this thing called politics where they separate, you know, Caucasians from the black people, from the Mexicans, from the Asians, and you kind of have to stick with your own ethnic group. And um, here it's not like that. Once I, I guess you could say, woke up to other people like me, it was definitely easier to make the transition to come out and say hi. Not like pride or anything like that, like I didn't come out with a rainbow flag, but. It was just easier for me to mix and mingle when I saw that there were people like me. But even in protective custody, there are predators. Just because you're in this PC module doesn't make you safe, you know what I'm saying? Because they got someone like me rolling around here. Among those in protective custody for their sexual or gender orientation is a potentially violent group of inmates gang dropouts. Years of gang mentality isn't forgotten easily. And with these inmates in the mix, the risk of violence is constant. They put us together with these people and, you know, like someone like me or someone like the homie, you know, we just, you know, get pissed off one day and just say, you know what, these and just start sticking them or something, start beating them down with these broomsticks or something. It's just one bad day waiting to happen. I go out there and I'll be, I'll be checking these fools, like, you know, like, I let them know, no, you're not protected. 
Yeah. They got monsters out here. Luckily for Ricky, a longtime protective custody resident who goes by the name Rachel has taken him under her wing. They call me the granny tranny um, because of my age and my gray hair, I guess, and the fact that I just tend to mother these people as they come through. It's a natural instinct for me. Her medication has got her breasts sore. Oh. And they're hurting. Okay. So I'm going to give her a coffee bag so she can use it like an ice bag and, and yeah. put it under, cool it down. They come in and they look like they need help. I'll go give them help. Rachel has helped many new inmates learn the ropes in the nearly five years she's been in CCDC. She is showing Ricky how to navigate the world of protective custody and teaching him the skills he will need to survive prison. When I saw Rachel, I was like, is this co-ed? <laughs> Me and Rachel get along great. We just instantly had this connection. She shared with me her story, the, her likes or dislikes, things like that we have a lot in common. From that point on, I just kind of separated myself from everybody else and, you know, just started associating with Rachel a lot more. I put another picture in your room. Did you? Yeah. The drawings were beautiful, thank you. Oh, they were cheap and quick, and I just, I didn't put enough time into them. I can't even draw a stick figure, so they were amazing. Well, there you go, there's a stick figure for you. I can't even do that. <laughs> oh, well. He's a rare person. He's one of those people that uh, is, he's got a magnetic personality. It's, it makes it a lot easier to have somebody like that that I can talk to, that I can relate to. Some of our experiences growing up, figuring out who we are, what we are, uh, are similar. And some of the experiences we went through, the trials and tribulations of people who were unwilling to accept us as we are, um, those are similar too. Definitely try to keep each other encouraged because in here, we're really all we have. For those who don't fit in, finding someone who has your back may be key to doing time. But in jail, nothing lasts forever. Any day now, Ricky will be rolled out to prison. And without Rachel watching his back, he will be forced to fend for himself. Bro, you're out of here, roll it up. Let's do this. Daniel Brown has just spent 15 days in the hole for standing up to a bully who taunted him for hanging out with black inmates. Now it's time to return to general population. There is some advantages to the hole. The fact that you don't have to deal with so many I'll be in a hole by the end of the day. Because I'm tired of being threatened and bullied. Most of the white people in here, they're racist. A lot of them are racist. I don't believe in that. A black man upstairs has 10 fingers, 10 toes. He walks on two feet. He's just like me. A lot of these people do prison time and have to run with racist people. If I ever went to prison, I would probably get killed because I couldn't do that race. For Daniel, a return to general population is more cursed than blessing. He's back with the bullies and politics he refuses to give in to. And to make things worse, Daniel is about to get a roommate, something that in here is a serious gamble. And you never know who you're going to get, whether they're going to try to kill you or try to rape you or you never know. I'm in jail. <laughs> They're all the same. They're all criminals. You always got to be on your toes in jail. Always. You never know when you can get attacked. Break it up, okay. In the Clark County Detention Center, a code red has been called. A fight has broken out. And at the center of it is Antoine Valentine. I got into a little trouble with some people, you know, just like, man, stop being a bitch. And pow, had to hit him. Get out of the window. One of the biggest things that you can't say in prison is call somebody a punk or a bitch. That's one of the biggest things. You do that, yo, you call, if you call me a bitch, right there, I'm firing on you. 
What's your last name? Valentine. I just guess you could say like I guess a lot of the things that give me trouble I just don't like fakeness. Be real about something. Respect. I don't want respect. One from the ninth floor to 54. If Antoine would behave, he'd be fine. Out of the large population that's here, there's several that are in his same category. But as long as they behave, they're not an issue. If once his once he starts to you know flex his muscle a little bit and try to influence people, uh, then there's a problem. So in that regard, he is dangerous. So you just said you were defending yourself. Yep. If you pull up the, if you pull up the tapes, you'll see it. Okay, we'll be doing that. Come over here, for me, bud. Kind of what I'm getting from you was he kind of like the uh, the mouthpiece or the shot caller for the blacks up in there? No, hell no, he ain't even a shot caller. Up in the modules, it's race-based. So if an uh, individual is disrespected, then they have to step up and they have to, you know, not show uh, weakness. For Antoine, this fight was a wake-up call. In jail, being called a bitch is the ultimate sign of disrespect. And in a unit where races typically stand up for their own, nobody had his back. I've always said, like, yo, I'm gonna keep it real for my people, for my squad, everything, you know what I'm saying? And it seems like I'm putting them ahead of myself. So it's like, I'm too worried about, you know, putting myself out there for others. But it's like, are they doing the same for me? As Antoine settles into the hole, 20-year-old Daniel Brown is resuming his life in general population. He has met his new cellmate, a seasoned inmate named Sean Hall. And it seems Daniel may have gotten lucky. Hey, in this book, right? This <laughs> one dude, it's a romance novel, right? This one dude, he likes this nurse, but this nurse, she's a she's a Amen, which is like some type of which is a, some type of religion. Amish? Yeah, Amish. Mm -hmm. Right. So he's over here trying to flirt with her and all that. That's funny you were talking about, I was just reading about the Amish people in the social studies part of this book, like, last night. When I walked in, it was just like, yes, so much to talk to. <laughs> I get to run my mouth. <laughs> I get somebody to drive crazy. Let's do it. <laughs> Well, he, he introduced himself and, you, you know, and, and, you know, and ran around a little bit and, you know, I, get, I, could, I, I could tell that he really wanted to talk to somebody. So, uh, you know, after five minutes, I gave him a helping ear. So let me go and listen to him because obviously he just want to talk. So let me go on and, and at least respect the young man and, and listen to him talk because he needs to get something out. Sometimes people just need to get stuff out. When you actually get somebody to talk to, it's like, yeah. Finally. And he's very understanding. He's very understanding about some of the stuff I've been through. Sean seems to be taking Daniel under his wing. Something that Daniel desperately needs. When you got a young individual like that, they want to be embraced. They want some type of older brother, somebody they can look up to. So what I try to do is I try to be that person that they can look up to, ask questions, you know what I mean, look at me in a positive perspective. I appreciate this guy a lot. I've only been in here two, three days, but I can live here for a while. I can, yeah. I don't know if he can with me, but I, I can stay with him for a while. Half the people don't even meet you. Half the people are no good for you. A lot of times, we're not no good for ourselves, though. If you really think about it, right, it, not, it might not be the other people, it might just be us. Think about it. It could be, see, a lot of times we blame things on other people or other things or situations, right, but it'd, be, it'd really be us. It is, it's always us. Nobody can do, make you do anything. Yeah. You're making me think it's hard as hell. Like yeah. last night. Because it's true. With Sean looking out for him, Daniel feels safe. But Sean's sentence is almost up and he will soon be released, leaving Daniel to once again fend for himself. Down in 5B, Ricky Lane's time here is coming to an end as well. But rather than going home, he'll be heading to prison. 
Oh, so from what I understand too, in prison, you can have your own cooler. Yeah, but you gotta buy ice for it, and it doesn't last very long. I mean, it's not like one of those plug-in ones that you can oh, plug in like no? a mini. I don't think so. I thought it was like a little miniature refrigerator. Uh huh. I think it's just like just a an little, ice chest. Yeah, it's just like it? a little. Yeah. So then that only lasts about a good day. Rolling out also means leaving Rachel, his mentor and friend, behind. I have to apologize because without no without having the felt pen, I can't do the fine lines, so it looks crappy as hell. I think you did an amazing job. You can either take it with you or toss it. I'll make you another one. No, I'm going to definitely take that with you. If they let you. They should let me. I'm going to put it with my uh, personal property, like with my letters. But I'm going to miss you. <laughs> Don't start me now. Don't start me now. I'll start waterworks now, and then we're going to both look silly getting out of here. Rachel has helped Ricky learn the basics of surviving protective custody. But prison will be an entirely new challenge and potentially a much more dangerous place for an openly gay inmate like Ricky. I'm petrified about going to prison for one reason only, and that's because I don't know exactly what type of environment I'm going to be walking into. Prayerfully, once I get up there, I'll, I'll meet somebody like Rachel that I can, I can cling to, but there's not going to be no replacement here whatsoever. Rachel has also helped Ricky come to terms with who he is and the crime he committed. And I pointed the finger at myself and blamed myself. And once I went through that, you know, the woe was me type of story, I started blaming everybody else. And she said, you know what? I can't really blame anybody else for what it is that you've done. I had to really take that into consideration you know, and, and that definitely helped with the change that, that I feel like I'm going through right now. Um, I can't really blame anybody for putting myself in this situation. Make sure you get uh, your address and contact information to my home clinic. And I will have them make copies of the pictures of me okay. and send them to you. Okay. So you'll have pictures of me up there. I feel very, very close to them. When he leaves, I'm probably going to cry because I've built that, that tight of a bond with him, which is unusual for a situation like this because it's such a transient society. Most of the people I've seen come and go, never hear from them again. So he was just like, you better keep in contact with me. And I was just like, I have to. You know, you're a part of my life. I just can't say goodbye and just totally leave it at that, you know, especially when someone makes an impact in your life. Rachel has done everything she can to help Ricky prepare for prison. And in a matter of days, he will be on his own. At the Clark County Detention Center, Antoine Valentin is in the hole after attacking another inmate for disrespecting him. The incident was a stark reminder that Antoine does not have the respect he feels he deserves from his fellow inmates. This wasn't supposed to be my life. This was not supposed to be it. It's like I can't get out of the system, you know? It just seems like trouble is literally hanging on to me and doesn't want to, you know, let go. I know there's some people out there, there's some haters out there that might be like, yeah, you know, the hell with him. He's a piece of you know? But other people that have known me, like some of the things that I've done, why I've done them, you know, uh, I've always been a good brother, you know, faithful. Being half Hispanic and half black in the racially segregated world of jail is making Antoine an outsider, a misfit. And while he spends time with both races, neither will fully accept him. I don't know why a lot of blacks and Mexicans don't get along. I just never grew up like that. 
you know, like, what's the, what's the point of not liking somebody because of their skin color? That just seems stupid to me. But you have to choose. Antoine is 25 days in the hole ahead of him. Time to think about his position, stuck between two races, which can be a dangerous path. A path that means going it alone or choosing a side. It's not supposed to be this way. Back in 9A, Daniel Brown is facing the reality of going it alone as well. Sean, his cellmate and mentor, is gone. With nobody watching his back, Daniel has made a choice. Keep his head down in hopes of avoiding conflict. I can go to the hole for anything in here. You gotta watch what you do. That's why I decided to stick to myself. I come out for one free time a day. Do what I gotta do. And I stay in the room the rest of the day. And I stay up all night. That way I can sleep through it all day. That way I don't get in trouble. It gets lonely in jail running by yourself. But it saves the hassle and the trouble of people from the opposite crew threatening and just harassing you every day. It's a lonely path and one that seems to be taking a toll, especially today. Today is my birthday and I am in CCDC. It's my 21st birthday at that in Las Vegas. Man, I could be in a casino right now for the first time. Well, it's just, this, it's just the same day. It's the same day as yesterday, another day in jail. Just because it's my birthday, don't give me nothing special or nothing not special. It's the same day. There is a light at the end of the tunnel, though. Daniel's release date is coming up. His loitering sentence is almost served. But any more trouble could mean another cab hearing, potentially more charges, and time added to his sentence. You're always stressing while you're in here, whether you're getting ready to go home or just coming in. You feel you got to make friends to make your time go. When you're getting ready to go, you feel like you don't need nobody to be your friend because you're going to leave. That's all you ignore them. Even then, it's kind of hard because they take offense to it. But I go home in two weeks, and people in here are not worth my time. That's the only thing that pretty much keeps me going. It's about release day. Every day is another day closer. At the Clark County Detention Center, Daniel Brown is returning from his final court appearance. After clearing up one last jaywalking ticket, he is finally preparing to right. leave. So how much time do you have left in here? I go home today. Oh, really? Yeah. Where do you live? Um, right now, I'm not too sure. Do I have anywhere to go? Not right now, I don't know. Hmm. I haven't really been keeping up with anybody. Nobody's been riding me. You got family in town? My mom's in California. My sister's out here, but she's drug addict. I can't go do that, because then I'll... Maybe before you get out today, you should ask to see Bernie Polly. If you want, I'll go down and talk to her and have her come up and talk to you, because she could probably find you somewhere to stay. For Daniel, reality is setting in. As dangerous as his life in jail has been, the world outside may be even worse. I have a lot going through my mind. I don't know what I'm going to be when I get out, if I'm going to be homeless or if I'm going to have a place to be. I'm not going to have no money. I'm not going to have nothing when I get out. I have nothing here in Vegas, so I'm going to try and find my way back to California. And I don't know what I'm getting out to, so it's kind of scary. Down the hall, Ricky Lane's time has come. He is headed to prison to serve four years for burglary. 
so many different emotions going on inside of my head right now. A little anxious to put all of this behind me and start a new chapter. I'm also kind of scared, but had some great experiences to take with me. And that calms me. Today is the beginning of the rest of my life. <laughs> I had to learn that prison, going to prison, should be just like any other situation that we're faced with in life. It's about attitude. If you go into it with a negative attitude, then that's what you'll get out of it. You know, like Rachel, she always instills me to just stay positive-minded. She said there's nothing to fear, you know, just go in there with a smile like you came in here, and she says she's sure I'll be okay, so that's comfort alone. One of the greater things of me looking forward to going to prison is knowing that I still am a work in progress. Three years. I'll see you guys later. Back upstairs, Bonnie Polly, the jail's chaplain, has been told that Daniel is getting out and has nowhere safe to stay. Graham, come on down. I understand that you're gonna get out of jail today. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. And that you don't really have anywhere you're gonna know where to go. I have a, I have a couple of suggestions for you. You could go to, and get involved with the Catholic Charities Work Program. That sounds like I want to know about it. Well, it's, it's, it'll provide you a place to stay and give you food, and then, and then they'll work with you to get you to the next step. Catholic Charities will help me get a bus pass back to California. Uh, dude, is that where you want to go? Well, after a few days of telling my family here what I'm going to do. To, so, so now you do have family here. Yeah. But, but you don't, but you, but, but you don't have any access to them, or yeah, the drug addicts. Oh, so you don't want to be there. I don't want right? to be around the environment. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, we can probably help you with a bus ticket. Okay. So does that all sound pretty good, Daniel? Yes, ma'am. So you just take that, all right? Okay? Thank you, buddy. And you be back in touch with me, and you can always get me on my cell phone. But I'm also right here in jail. I don't want to come back here to meet you, though. Okay. All right? All right. Okay. God bless you. Good. God bless you. With the promise of shelter, work, and a ticket home, Bonnie Polly has given Daniel hope, if he chooses to take it. In 5B, the protective custody unit, Rachel is adjusting to life without Ricky. There's not enough laughter. There's not enough happiness, not enough joking around. He was a light. In jail, friendship, like the bond between Ricky and Rachel, is rare. And true to his word, Ricky has stayed in touch, sending letters from prison. Dearest Rachel, first off, I miss you so much. My heart was so broken when I left. Thank you for loving me and being my guardian angel. I truly am blessed to have you in my life. Prison so far is not as horrible as people think. I have been praying, keeping my head buried in the Bible, doing my usual workout, meditating. I hope you are okay and smiling and laughing. Lots of love, 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 laugh, Ricky. In the time that I've been here, the amount of people I've seen come and go, there's always a sense of loss when you get attached to somebody. Always. If you get really attached to somebody like Ricky and I did, it's harder. You know, people come and people go. There's really nothing permanent. Ricky is gone, but life goes on. Come on, sunshine, you're pretty enough and Rachel has come to the aid of another newcomer. She's super cool, and uh, 
she's really down to earth. And any problem, if there is a problem, she'll solve it. If there's a problem, like, with me and another inmate, and then she'll fix it. I don't think you're growing up. People like you, my dad would fix that. A little bit straight. And yo, and yo, 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 say, come on now. See what happened? That's what happened in today's world. I think you got I try to straighten up my kid, you know, they gave me a year. And that's why kids like that turn out to be You know what I'm saying? Because there ain't no discipline at home. That's OK. We'll forgive you. Every block is different, you know? There's just some places where whites can't, aren't, aren't supposed to live with blacks, blacks aren't supposed to live with whites. Uh, politics, you can't, you can't really put a stop to it. Antoine Valentin is back in GP after serving 25 days in the hole for fighting with another inmate. The incident has convinced Antoine that if he wants to truly be accepted by one race in here, he needs to turn his back on the other. You gotta choose a side. So, I think me personally, I would just get along more with the blacks, you know what I'm saying? I grew up with the black side of my family, you know what I'm saying? So, nothing against the Hispanic, something like that, you know what I mean? Like. I'm Hispanic, you know, I'm Puerto Rican, I'm proud, you know what I'm saying? The race thing is just, it's stupid. But then, for so long that you get used to it, and then you start becoming just more bitter, you know? Sometimes it's like, I feel like I'm like a, a broken shadow of my former self. Not as happy. Broken hearted, you know, feelings hurt. So then it's like, cut everything off, have no feelings. Seems like it's easier that way. For Daniel Brown, five long months are coming to an end. His sentence is served, and he's going home. OK, now you're going to sign by both the red X's for me. You're getting your money and your property back. After changing into his street clothes and reclaiming his property, he's free to go. But without a home to go to, Daniel is stepping into the unknown. Yeah, I'm nervous, because I don't really know what's out there. I don't know what's out there waiting for me. Look at that. Look at that exit sign for me. Yeah. <laughs> what up, there? Oh, my God! Holy I've been waiting for you for so long. I'm just not even to Daniel's surprise, his sister, niece, and friends are waiting for him. The family and friends who hours earlier he admitted were a dangerous influence. I miss you. Yeah? <laughs> I don't know if I want to leave. I told mom I'm coming to California, but I can't. I don't want, I you. Just told her you, you I don't can't. want you to. I can't. We just told her you can't. I got three more months more on parole, and I really don't want you to leave because. Right, I'm 21. Who's going to buy me my first beer? Like, you can't. We got a four loco right now. What? Yeah, I'm a Christian now. <laughs> so wait, next week? Yeah, Daddy probably. Want <laughs> want Who is that? Bye Your bye. mom. Hello? Hi, mom. Did How are you doing? Like they changed me. I don't know. <laughs> mm -mm. Mom, I'm 21, and I don't know if I want to leave Vegas. I, I didn't lie to you. It's different. I, I'm going to do right. But I'm gonna do it in Vegas. Uh, is I'm gonna go get some food. You got a food stamp card? Like... You don't have your food stamp card? Nothing? What's wrong with you? Her cash at all. Because Brian's paying child support now. Do you have any money? No. I, Mom, I have, I have a place right. to go. All right, Mom. Bye. Why is she so negative about everything? Everybody says they learned their lesson and they don't want to come back, but I'm going to do my best to stay away from here. Keep my head up and continue to do right and work. I should be all right.